Demon G already looks fantastic, but there's two major issues that really hold the game back. First, let's talk about performance. Even with top of the line hardware, like at RTX 4090, Demon G can still suffer from frame hitching, especially if you want to enable traffic. It's seriously no joke that Beeman G requires a NASA PC to run the game smoothly while looking great at the same time, and plus adding tons of customization mods probably doesn't help performance either. And second, it's the anti-aliasing. It's, well, pretty terrible. Even with ultra settings at 1440p resolution, the game's anti-aliasing ruins the immersion with those jagged, blurry edges and it really takes away from the experience, especially when everything else looks so good. And that's why today, I'm gonna show you how to solve most of these issues. I'm gonna walk you through some in-game settings that you can tweak yourself without any mods, but we are gonna focus on some pretty awesome mods that'll fix a lot of the performance issues, improve the visuals, and most importantly, finally fix the awful anti-aliasing. First up, for a performance tweak, I have a fix that requires no downloads or mods, Beeman G offers a experimental Vulkan renderer that can seriously boost the performance on your system. Personally, I've seen huge improvements like two times the frame rate, and my load times in the maps are a lot faster when I use the Vulkan renderer. But there's a big catch. If you use Vulkan, some graphics mods won't work, including the anti-aliasing fix that I'm going to show you here in a moment. Hopefully in the future they can improve on this Vulkan renderer and make it more compatible with things like graphic mods and better anti-aliasing, but for now I personally don't use this option. Moving on, there are various things you can tweak from the in-game settings. Beeman G will even give you a nice description of what each option does. You can even take this a step further Go into the world editor when you're loaded into a map, and here you can fine tune things such as the sun position, the brightness, and much more. At first, this is going to look a bit daunting, and there is a bit of a learning curve, but if you really want to dial in these settings, you can do so here. I might cover some settings in another video, but today we're going to be lazy and fix everything with mods. There's quite a few solid graphic mods that you can choose from, but here's what I would personally use. If you really want to get hands-on with graphics settings, I recommend checking out Zeet's graphics mod. This mod gives you full control over individual settings and lets you fine-tune almost everything related to the game's visuals. But if you don't want to spend your time tweaking every single little setting, don't worry, this mod also comes with a profile manager, and this is going to allow you to import presets that other people have already created, and it's going to save you the hassle. Another option that I personally use is going to be Car Killer's Graphics Settings mod. This mod's great because it lets you improve the overall quality of the game's visuals, and it also gives you options to even lower some of the settings if you're on a lower end system. I prefer this mod because of how easy it is to use, plus it gives you more control over the depth of field, which you can set up the perfect screenshot. Next, you can pair this with Car Killer's Dynamic Skybox and the preset mod as well. This is going to allow you to choose from a variety of skyboxes on the fly. That's going to add better lighting and atmosphere to the game. If you download the presets mod alongside this, you're going to get 8 additional options to choose from. And I like this mod because it also lets you enhance the water visuals and adjust water reflection quality for an even more polished look. And a few honorable mentions for additional graphics mods that I enjoy. One is realistic headlights. This makes night driving way more feasible. By improving the headlight effects, it's going to make the roads more visible. There's also Luke's performance mod, which is going to disable collision checks between vehicles more than 15 meters away from you. And this leads to a significant performance boost when you have a lot of cars on the screen, so I highly recommend this if you drive with traffic on. And at this point in the tutorial, your graphics should look overall pretty good. But I saved the best thing for last. It's finally time to fix the awful anti-aliasing. And my favorite mod is going to be Snowy Moon's Temporal Anti-Aliasing, which is going to completely transform how your game looks. It even includes the option for NVIDIA DLAA support for those of you with compatible graphics cards. And this mod's a bit different than your typical in-game mods, so it's going to require a manual installation process. So I'm going to walk you through how to do that now. The install is pretty easy if you just follow along. You're going to go to snowymoon.io, click on BeamNG. We're going to go ahead and click under Temporal Anti-Aliasing V1. If there's a newer version at the time of you watching this video, go ahead and feel free to download that. even has an installation instructions here, but I'll show you how to do this as well. 
So you're going to scroll down to the 1.0.10 update or whichever is the latest version at the time of you watching this video. Click on that and you're going to download two files. The first one's going to be the latest download here. And if you want to use DLSS and DLAA on your NVIDIA card, you're going to download this zip file. Next, you're going to open up Steam, right click on the bmng.drive executable and go to properties. You're going to click on installed files and click on browse. Once you're here under the bmng.drive folder, you're going to double click on bin64 and you're going to copy and paste these files on over here. If you downloaded the DLSS slash DLAA for NVIDIA, you just drag and drop it in the same location. Once that's complete, you can go ahead and launch bmng.drive again. Just make sure that you launch it without the Vulkan renderer. This does not work with Vulkan, so you're going to have to use DirectX 11. Once you've launched BeamNG, you can go under Options, Graphics, and you're going to go ahead and disable the anti-aliasing built into the game, as well as the depth of field. Then you can go ahead and load into any map you want. We're going to load into West Coast. It really doesn't matter. Okay, so next, to pull up the menu, once you're in the map, hit Control p You can also rebind this if this doesn't work for you. So you can see here, with everything disabled, how jagged everything looks. So we're going to go ahead and enable DLAA. You can automatically see the fence looks better. And if we enable FXAA, it does improve the sharpness just a bit, but it can make things just a little more blurry. So I personally leave this off. I also like to use my sharpening on three. That way you don't over sharpen the image because then it just looks like this. Alternatively, if you don't sharpen it, it looks very smeary and it's going to look a lot worse. So I find a good middle ground to be between three and five and that works best for me at 1440p resolution. If you don't have DLAA, you can choose temporal anti-aliasing clarity or you can choose just normal temporal anti-aliasing, which looks a little bit more smeary than DLAA. And you can see here, there's a lot of visual glitches when it comes to the fences. And once the menu is closed, you can see things look a lot better, a lot less jagged edges. It's not perfect, but it's definitely better than what Beam&G has baked into the game. And finally, your Beam&G should look really good at this point. We fixed the graphics, fixed part of the performance issue, and now we have a better implementation of anti-aliasing. I know there's probably plenty of other ways to squeeze performance out of Beam&G and improve the overall look, but these mods are my personal favorites for making the game not only run smoother, but look better as well. And that's going to be it for this video. Now I'd love to hear from you all. What are some of your favorite mods or tips for boosting performance or enhancing the visuals? Be sure to drop those in the comments below. And if you have any suggestions for things you want to see in the future with BeamNG, also let me know. I've really been enjoying making these type of videos. And as always, thank you all so much for watching. If you found this video helpful, don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that bell so you don't miss any future videos. It's been Exilent. Thank you all so much for watching and have a great day.